I'm slightly uncomfortable. News from the booth! Hello, villagers. Welcome back to the VoiceOver Village. I'm your village idiot, Rick McIver. Today, we're doing a head-to-head comparison between the Rode PodMic and the brand spanking new AT2040. First, let me say, I bought both of these mics with my own money. So there's no sponsorship here. There's no freebies. There's no, hey, would you under the table, you know, do little do. No, this is a 100% no BS review. Honest, straight from the idiot's mouth. I'm the idiot. Okay, in this corner, it's the ubiquitous Rode pod mic. Clocking in at around $99, it's a fan favorite. But in this corner, straight out of Tokyo, we have the new Upstart, the Audio-Technica AT2040. Also clocking in at $99. Uh, let's get it on! Okay, that was really dumb. Okay. Go get some headphones. You're going to want headphones to be able to hear the difference between the Rode Pod mic and the AT2040. You really can't tell too much of a difference on your TV speakers or your laptop speakers. So go get some headphones. I'll wait. Go on. It's okay. No, I'm not going to wait. Let's go. So in the intro, I said straight out of Tokyo, the new contender. Well, it's not really a new contender. Audio-Technica has been around a long time. We are all familiar with it. It's a solid brand. It's got a solid reputation. Audio-Technica makes great microphones. There are a lot of voice actors out there that swear by the AT2020. And the AT2020 is about 100 bucks as well. So why in the wide, wide world of sports would they need to make another $100 microphone? Why in the name of Don LaFontaine would you need another $99 microphone? Well, because. That's why. Don't judge me. This is the new AT2040. It's a large diaphragm, hypercardioid, dynamic microphone. Dynamic means it's going to reject a lot more of the room noise than a condenser microphone would. So if you're struggling with room noise, room tone, a treated space, uh, outside noise getting into your recording environment, this might be the trick for you. And it has a large diaphragm, which means the diaphragm is larger, bigger. The size is the... It's bigger. Other large diaphragm dynamic microphones are much more expensive. You have the Rode Procaster, or the Electro Voice ND96, or the AKG C214. They're all much more expensive than the $99 AT2040. Plus, look at these. They just look cool. Stripey with the patterns. It's cool. Now, as a voice actor, we don't necessarily care how our mics look. We're more interested in how they sound, right? But as more podcasts and content creators create more stuff on video, they want their mics to sound good and look good. And I think that's why that this Rode pod mic has taken off as well as it has. They're both going for that, you know, SM7B vibe, you know, that got real famous in some of the video podcasts that are out there. This one especially because it has almost the same exact frame with the little two knobs here. The AT2040 only has the single knob, but it kind of still has the same look. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. I'm running both of these mics into my Scarlett 2i4, one in one channel, one in the other channel, recording at the exact same time. I have the gain level set to about 90% for both. Um, I might have to boost them up a little bit in post-production when I'm editing, but I don't know that. If I do, I'll write it down here. But I will do no other processing, no normalizing, no nothing. It, what you hear is what's going into these 2i2 and then straight into QuickTime. Now in this situation, just to let you know how far away I am, I'm about a fist, about a fist away from both. I'm trying to stay right in the middle of both of these. So they're pointing right at the corner of my mouth. Ooh, I hit both of them. <laughs> <I> hit... <laughs> so as not to have too much plosive so that all the air goes this way. 
So I'm trying to stay equal distance from them as best I can. It's not easy. All right, let's focus on the pod mic here for a second. The pod mic is a cardioid microphone, which means, you know, it's that heart shape pattern in this, this side. And if I talk into the front of it, then you get this kind of sound. But if I go off to the side, this is what it sounds like over here. And then I'm back on the front. So you can see there is a bit of off axis rejection, which helps if you have, you know, other noise in the room or echoes or something. It helps it from getting into the microphone. Now, let's look at the AT2040. I To me, it sounds a little hotter than the pod mic, but I'll be able to confirm that in post. And if I do, I'll put it over here. The AT2040 has a hypercardioid pattern. That doesn't mean if you feed it sugar that it bounces all over the place. No, it means that the pickup area is tighter, right? Kind of like air kind of like this guy kind of like my 416 it's got a really tight pickup area it helps reject a lot more noise so we're gonna do here's me talk oops bonk sorry here's me talking straight into the mic and here's the off-axis rejection oh it really drops off when you get to the side when you're in the front it's nice and warm and you get off to the side it just goes away wow that hypercardioid pattern really works Dynamic mics are a great option if you are, let's say, doing a podcast and you have a couple of guests in your room. Well, then the mics won't bleed over into each other. You'll be able to control them a lot better. Let's say your recording space is less than ideal. You don't have a well-treated space or as well-treated as you would like. This could help. Now, I've heard you can't or shouldn't use a dynamic mic for voiceover. And the reasoning behind that is that the frequency range, the pickup range, is narrower than a condenser mic. You know, it, I think it kind of depends on your situation, on your microphone. I don't see it so black and white. I think it could go either way. If you have a good dynamic microphone and it suits your voice, who's to say it's not okay? Certainly not me. I'm the idiot, remember? Neither of these mics come out of the box with a shock mount. They're both hard-mounted, into the mic stand, which means they're gonna pick up all the little things. If you bump the table, here's the what it sounds like for that. Here's what it sounds like for this one if I'm bumping my desk. I'm tapping the boom arm here, tapping the boom arm there, tapping the mic on this one, tapping the mic on this one, shaking the camera like nobody's business. The AT2040, the, in the instructions, they say, here, you can buy this shock mount. This shock mount is called the AT8458A. It's only $29, and then you can have a shock mount that fits this just right. Other thoughts on these mics? I just like the way they look. And admittedly, I do a lot of on-camera work. And when I started as a voice actor, I started with this mic. This is the Rode NT1A. And it's, you know, your standard, you know, condenser microphone. And it's great, but it's kind of boring looking. You know, these are a little bit more interesting on camera. And so when I decided I was going to do more on camera work, I went and I bought this guy. This is really interesting on camera. However, I didn't like the way it sounded. <laughs> so I've stopped using it as much. I will actually use it for other things. Plus, I am a musician and I go gig live. And so I use this when I go out and it looks cool on stage. But, you know, if you want a mic that looks good on camera, you might want to consider something like this. If you look at both of these right here, this one, the road, is visually more appealing because you've got the contrast between the silver and the little bands on it. With the AT2040, it has the bands too, but because the mesh is black, it kind of blends in. I don't know. I think it depends on your situation. This kind of looks more like an SM7B than this does, but... So when you see someone doing a mic test and they do a plosive test, they aren't actually using good mic technique. Good mic technique for plosives aren't... You're not trying to push your air out. As a voice actor, we're trained to, you know, kind of soften our P's. And so when you see someone do a plosive test, they go, puh, 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 puh. you know, you're like, good God, these are horrible mics. Not really if you use proper technique. So for my plosive test, I'm actually going to use the technique that I use in the booth. Now, one is you talk across the mic and therefore the air goes across and you can't, you don't get that kind of poppy sound, but you can also just soften your piece. So let's do the road first. 
pizza's perfect with pineapple on top. That last kind of top, I did a little bit extra, but you know. Let's do the AT2040. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Now I'm going to use this. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. So there you go. These are the two mics. $99. The Rode Pod Mic or the AT2040. Brand new. Out of the box. Shiny. Today. Came. Ooh. So I hope this has been helpful. I really appreciate you watching. And if you want to watch some more videos that geek out about voiceover and video and YouTube and all that fun stuff, check these out. Oh, right here. There they are. <laughs> they got to go in front of the microphones. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time.